Good evening, everybody. I'm Dr. Joseph Baker from the Limerick Chiropractic Center, and I want to welcome you to our conversation this evening on vital needs to survive and thrive. Now listen, before we even get started with this conversation, I want to remind you, these workshops, as we do them, for, for us as chiropractic patients, it is a bedrock of how do we get well quicker, how do we stay well longer. It's one of the things that I recognize is oftentimes missed out upon in most offices, and in turn, it's that final key that helps to unlock so many of the problems that we build for ourselves. See, and the sad thing is, is that, you know, oftentimes we think we're very unique, that we are the only person who has this particular problem. And yet, we have to pause. And we have to remember, we're not that unique. And in fact, there are hundreds, if not thousands of individuals just in our circle of influence that are just like you and I. They've got the same problems. They have the same struggles. They've got the same aches and pains. And, and yet the only difference is, is that you know why it's happening you know what's at the root cause. And in turn, because you know, it gives you that clarity to understand why is it so important to make sure that you're learning so that you're able to create those changes. You're learning so that you can not only protect yourself, but also be the example to others in the future so that they don't get to the same place that you're at. In fact, I'm going to tell you, as we do these workshops every Tuesday night, I don't do them for me. I do them so that I can allow you the opportunity of helping somebody else out in your friend circle, some family member of yours that doesn't know what you know about chiropractic, that has no idea about better health choices, about those better decisions that we know lead to a better outcome. Because just like I talked about in you know, previous workshops, listen, oftentimes, this isn't me who says this. It's the researchers that tell us that poor decision making leads to higher rates of death in the United States. Higher rates of death. And I've given examples of that in the past as far as you know, our patients who are here in the office and friends and loved ones of theirs who have experienced exactly that. Things, bad choices that have gone wrong and led to those worst possible outcomes. We talk about these things not to scare you, but to help educate you on the fact that they are real. And making those better decisions has a definite positive to the health of your system. Now, I'm going to tell you, in the end, my hope is that as you share this information with somebody in your friends group, listen, you get to help them learn. You get to help them come into this journey alongside of you and learn more about how to make better decisions. In fact, you know, we're gonna talk about the safety pin in, in just a few minutes, so I'm gonna go ahead and just put that down. But you know what? We're gonna step into the conversation of what these vital needs are in order to help people understand, well, why is it important to make those right decisions? In fact, if you're not familiar with what vital needs are, very simply, it's a matter of creating a hierarchy of what's most important for your body. A lot of times as you ask the question, you know, you ask your friend, so what's the most important organ or system of the body? I love asking this to your little kids because they, listen, they've learned this in school. You know, bad training gives them bad answers, and that's what produces bad answers for adults. So, what's the most important organ? What's the most important system? Well, of course, it's my heart. My heart is the most important thing. And unfortunately, everybody has to shake their head no, because that's the wrong answer. Oftentimes, there's other guesses, but they're fewer and far between. But you know what? Here's the thing. So often we are misled by teachings from our youth and hence the reason why, you know what, we dispel those things. 
by recognizing that, you know, in the end, vital needs really means, hey, listen, how long am I going to survive without this system working the way it's supposed to? And we're going to identify a couple things in the next few minutes that help us better understand the hierarchy of why it is that we're able to make that decision. So, first things first. You know, there's this little thing that most of us like to do probably three, four, five times a day. And I sort of sound like KYW right now. But we, we like to eat. We like to fuel our body. You know, it's important. Nobody likes to feel those hunger pains. And you're going to notice in this pyramid that food is all the way at the bottom. So it's all the way at the bottom of the list here. And, and the reason is, is because we know, you know, a couple things about food that in the end, we could go for weeks without eating food. Now, we could talk about all different types of foods. We can talk about the nutrients, the proteins, the, the fats, the carbs, you know, what are good fats, what are bad fats. Listen, that's a conversation for another day. In the end, when we look at food and nutrients, our body can survive for weeks without consuming foods. Yes, we're not going to be in very good condition. In fact, sooner or later, one of the biggest problems, like we know with you know, anorexics, is that eventually that, an that condition, anorexia, will cause muscle wasting. And it will cause systems of the body to shut down because of it. But we can last months without consuming that food. Now, water is another story. It's a little bit higher up on that, on that platform there. Water, we know that H2O is something that makes up about 75% of our body. In fact, whenever you don't think water is important, and maybe you've heard some, you know, some doctor tell you, well, listen, water is really overrated. You know, you can really consume too much, or you know, you could drink milk or soda or iced tea or coffee, and it all counts a little bit towards it. Let me shake your, my head now. If you read all the research like I have, if you looked at all the information. We recognize that all of those byproducts, it prevents us from actually using that, those chemical components, H2O, the way they're intended. In fact, by the time we actually put everything in, we realize we get very, very little out when it's polluted with other types of things. And here's why it's so important. 75% of your body is made up of water molecules. Over 80% of your brain is water and fat. It's around about the time that you don't think that it's really important. Let me encourage you. Take a step back. Just consider those two numbers. Way above 75%. You know, your body, is, your body needs this stuff. And it's like any other resource. If you're not replenishing it sooner or later, sort of like the gas tank, eventually you're going to be on empty. What happens when you're on empty? Well, stuff doesn't run real well. You are exactly the same way. You need water. In fact, the general rule of thumb is that if you take your body weight and you divide it in half, well, that's about the amount of water that you want to start with. Some of us, we need a little bit more because of other things we consume. But we need to use that as a great reference point to start with. And if, you're, if that is the only thing that you take from our conversation tonight is, listen, I just have to drink more water. Well, then guess what? That is that very first step in order to help your body improve its level of function because your body needs this to heal. It needs it to function. Therefore, we want to make sure that we're consuming our part. Now, oxygen, H2O. This is above water. This is more important because, let's think, most of us are not Houdini. We can't survive a long period of time without our next breath of air. You know, as a scuba diver, I know, hey, listen, you've got three minutes. Three minutes to change out your tank. Now, if you're Houdini, you might be able to push it to four, four and a half minutes. But this body, not Houdini. I know that in the end, without that, that next breath of air in three minutes, bad things were going to happen to my brain. Well, guess what? Oxygen is used by every single cell in our body. And we get oxygen in and out of this system by, 
by breathing in through our nose and exhaling through our mouth, then yes, that is the proper way of breathing. And let's think, if it's stifled, if you're not able to get it in, if you've polluted the oxygen with other things, well, the system can't work as efficiently. It's not going to work as good. You're not going to not only get oxygen in, but you can't clear toxins out. And we wonder why so many individuals have had, you know, brain fog and other issues because of things that we've done to ourselves to obstruct that normal passage, that normal airway, and the normal flow of really, really good oxygen. That quality is going to drive the body. It's going to drive the engine that we use every single day. And here's the thing. Listen, it's like any other form of gas. If you put cheap gas in, guess what's going to happen? Your car is going to knock and ping. Well, guess what? If you're not breathing properly, if you're putting poor, poor quality oxygen into the system, your system, it's going to knock and ping. And let's think about it. That's not what we want. We don't want a system that's not working at an optimal level, that's not working at its at its peak performance. And in fact, you know what? We could do all of those other things. We can eat the best foods. We can drink the right amount of water. We can make sure that we're exercising and getting the best exchange of oxygen in and out of the system of ours. But here's the thing. When we look all the way at the top of this pyramid, when we look all the way at the top, our nervous system is up there. Because in the end, 100% of the signals of our body are created by that brain of ours and rely on our nervous system to get the signals out into every system, every organ, every tissue in our body. And let me be clear, when I say every, I mean absolutely every. Oftentimes people ask about you know, the, the immune system. It's like, well, I don't understand why you're telling me to come in, get adjusted, get checked when I'm not feeling good. Well, this is not a Dr. Baker thing. This is anatomy 101, that all parts of your immune system are controlled by your nervous system. There is direct connection between those two systems. Your endocrine system that regulates your, your heart rate, it regulates your metabolism, it regulates you know, your thirst centers and, and how warm or cold you feel. That's all controlled by your nervous system. So if your nervous system isn't functioning properly, the problem is, is that sadly, no other part of your body can work the way it's supposed to. Now, just the other day, I had the opportunity of pulling this down and you know, talking about how, you know, how simple this is and how it used to be used as a means by which you know, people were taught the complexity of how the body worked. So, long before there was this thing called Google or Siri, you know, there was the safety pin. And as a chiropractor, we used to use the safety pin in order to help the, the, the farmers and the, the factory workers better understand the complexity of how their brain up at the top here communicated with their body down here at the bottom. And, and how it would create a signal and send it down to the body at 100% and the body as it processed it and used it, it would send the signal back up to the brain so that it was able to know well, what was the next most right step. Now here's the problem. When you and I have a subluxation, when the bone comes out of place, it causes a breakdown in this connection, in this communication process. And sadly, you know what? All the exercise in the world is never going to move the, this bone back in place. All of the great food that we consume is never going to cause this bone to jump over. All the great water that we take in is never going to passively move this back to where it was intended. In fact, it's that chiropractic adjustment that we deliver in that split second that allows for that subluxation to be removed for this connection to be restored and for your body to get back to that level of vitality once again. So as a chiropractor, my job is simple. Find it, fix it, and leave it alone. 
you were created with absolutely everything inside your body that you need in order to operate at 100%. It's the way you were created. It's the way your body was designed. My job is just to restore what you already have inside of you so that it's able to work the way it's supposed to. So, you know, as we look at this list, yeah, you can last a couple months without food. You can only last a couple weeks, I mean, a couple days without water. Your next breath of air, I mean, if you're not taking it in within three or four minutes, your brain's shutting down, it's done. Your nervous system, when we lack that connection between our brain and those body parts in a split second, the body doesn't work the way it's supposed to. Many of you have been muscle tested. Many of you have experienced the before and after. You've had that weakness in the testing, whether it's your arm or your leg, and and after that adjustment, and we restored that connection, the strength that is restored in that fact that the body is able to fire off and work the way it's supposed to is absolutely an incredible thing. Listen, in the end, when we talk about vital needs and what's most important for our body, it is by far that nervous system. Leaps and bounds. You could take the best food in, but guess what? If the nerve to your stomach isn't working properly, you're not gonna break it down. You're not going to absorb it the way it's supposed to. If you take that great water in, you know, if, if in fact the muscles aren't able to contract and relax the way they're supposed to, the toxins are still going to build up inside the system because you're not exchanging it properly. Even if you're outside exercising, well, can you really exercise as well as you're supposed to if you got this low back pain? If you got this crick in your neck that doesn't allow you to run in a straight line? Well, the answer is no. You're never going to be able to get that exchange the way you're supposed to. So we recognize the most important thing in our, in our body happens to be that properly functioning nervous system. And hence the reason why I recognize that in the end, the most important thing that we could possibly ever do is make sure that we're getting checked. Listen, this is not something that I say this quote comes from a, a, a book, uh, it's a, a physiology textbook, it's one in which that I use going through chiropractic college. It's called Guidance. And I think this quote is just apropos for this conversation. In the absence of continuous transmission of nerve signals from the brain stem into the cerebrum, the brain becomes useless. The bottom line, if in fact there's a lack of communication, a lack of flow within the nervous system, the system becomes useless. That really means that we don't have that vitality. And you know, you and I both know people in our personal lives, at work, friends of ours, neighbors down the street, they are not living life. Or maybe they're, they, they're getting up and they're getting out, but they're not doing the things that they used to do the way they want to do them. Listen, I'm going to encourage you to share this information, to make sure that your friends have the opportunity of learning just like you have, that the most important thing that we could possibly do is get checked. And since getting checked is so simple, let me just describe it. You know, quite simply, your posture, it was a window into your spine and your nervous system. Many of you can still remember that very first posture check as you were pushed back in place and you could feel the difference between where you were and what normal was like and how awkward it was. But that posture is a window into what we see inside. From there we take our head, we do what's called palpation. We feel the spine for how the joints are positioned and moving. And it's not enough that we see that things are shifted and twisted, but as things are not moving properly, it's that confirmation that, yes, subluxation. There is a high likelihood that subluxation should be present, can be present. And in fact, in the end, what it means is that the most right thing to do is just simply getting checked. 
looking within, confirming with x-rays that in fact, that's exactly what is there and how bad has it become? Because just like a cavity, the longer it's there, the worse it gets. For our patients at the Limer Chiropractic Center, I'm gonna ask you, not just to like, comment, but also share this information. And in the comment section, I want to hear from you. What's the one thing that you're challenged by? What is the one thing that is that big pink elephant that you still need to work on, whether it is choosing better foods, whether it is actually drinking more water, whether it's getting up and moving your body more with exercise, which one of those things is that thing for you that's on your next hit list of stuff to attack? I know that we have a plan chiropractically for you and we're watching as your body processes and moves forward, but what's that next thing that you want to start working on? I'm looking forward to seeing your comments below. I'm Dr. Joseph Baker from the Limber Chiropractic Center.